the president is not a member of the either of the house. If you look at the upper house or the lower house, president is not a member of. This is Dr. Bijender Jha. I teach polity, and today uh, we will, you know, discuss the parliament. the parliament which is one of the most important uh, topic you know from the perspective of prelims as well as from the perspective of maths now if you see parliament you know parliament has basically uh, the lok sabha the rajya sabha and then the president if you look at indian parliamentary democracy right or in any parliamentary democracy there is a you know the one titular head or ceremonial head for example in britain there is a you know house of representatives lok sabha ya lower house this is called lower house or it is also called popular house or it is also called house of representative house of representatives now the the rajya sabha it is called upper house upper house right or house of elder house of elder Now, if you look at in uh, Britain, it is called House of Law. House of Law. कहाँ पर कहा जाता है? Britain. Now, if you look at in any parliamentary democracy, there is a parliament, right? Like India. So, if you look at India, had opted Westminster model of democracy or parliamentary democracy. Now, where it has the lower house and then upper house and then the president president is very much integral part of the parliament president is a in- integral part of the parliament now question comes here that why the president is very much integral part of the parliament although the president is not a member of the either of the house if you look at the upper house or the lower house president is not a member of the either of the house neither of the rajya sabha nor of the lok sabha but president is very much integral part of the parliament why is it so if you look at the parliamentary democracy parliamentary democracy you know there is a principle like in uk there is a crown in parliament right in uk parliamentary democracy now if you look at there is a there is crown in parliament this is actually the ritual you can say that ceremonial now similarly if you look at in india's parliamentary democracy because indian parliamentary democracy is basically inherited from british colonial era and here we follow there is president in parliament president in parliament this we follow apart from it if you look at president the role of the president in parliamentary proceedings which is very important now if you look at the role of the president do you know the president president addresses the house you know just before the beginning of the parliament the president addresses you know the house 
of the parliament just before its just before it begins its journey its journey for example if you look at the first parliament the first parliament that constituted in 1950 and lasted till 1957 so the first parliament constituted in 1952 right and when parliament actually became right it begins with the presidential address president addresses the house similarly if you look at the current parliament is 7th 17th parliament the current parliament is 17th parliament that actually initiated in 2019 and that will end in 2024 now if you look at that you know in the same the 17th parliament begins its journey with the address of the president now look at the 18th parliament 18th parliament shall be constituted in 2024 now it shall begin with the address of the president so each new parliament begins its journey with the address of the parliament this is one thing right so each new parliament begins its journey with the presidential address secondly secondly if you look at in each financial year president start its session with the presidential address in each financial year in each financial year you know the parliament meant begins its journey begins its session you know with the presidential address what do you mean if you look at parliament has three session now parliament each parliament has three session now if you look at parliament in a year we have three session what are the three session one is called budget session right that begins in february and that continue till may that ends in may right the second session is the monsoon session monsoon session and that is start not in june but july july september august no may june there's no july august september yeah july to september three month and then you have winter session now winter session starts with november and that you know end in december now if you look at so this is a session in a financial year now each you know so this is the first session now in the first session if you look at first session begins with the address of the president thirdly so thirdly you know president can summon the parliament to meet at a time and place at the president thinks fit president can summon the house the president can summon the house to meet at place and time as he thinks fit right now look at so president can summon the house to meet right now if you look at fourth the president can dissolve the house can dissolve the lok sabha because rajya sabha is not subject to dissolution 
Raj Sabha is a permanent body which which does not dissolve. But Lok Sabha dissolves. No president can dissolve the Lok Sabha, right? He can he can you know prorogue the house. He can pro prorogue the house. Right. So look at the role of the president. If if you see, if the parliament passes a bill, it goes to the president for his assent. Right now, Draupadi Murmu is the president. Now it goes to our assent. Right, and without assent of the president, not a bill, not a single bill becomes law. Right. So you know when the president or when the parliament. passes a bill no it becomes an act it becomes an act only after an assent of the president assent of the president right if you look at the you know uh, president causes to let the financial bill now if you look at the president you know according to article 112 according to article 112 the president causes to let down Let down the annual financial bill. Annual financial statement, popularly known as it is a budget, right? Before before the House of the Parliament, the Parliament. Now, if you look at money bill if you look at money bill now money bill is introduced in the parliament you know with proper prior approval of the president so here you can see the role of the president in the parliament and this is why the parliament the president is a very much integral part of the parliament the president so if you look at looking at the role at the role of the president you know in the president you know it can be said said that that the president is president is an integral part part of the parliament right but president is not a member of the either of the house lok sabha or rajya sabha now if you look at the you know how we can define parliament how we can define parliament right before we discuss Each house separately, the Lok Sabha, as well as the Rajya Sabha, its strength, its nature of work, different offices of the Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha, the you know functions of the Parliament. Now, how we can define Parliament? Now, if you look at you know, the Parliament is a public institution. Parliament is a public. and the institution reflects you know reflects the will of the people right basically it represents we the people of india actually you know enshrined in the preamble of the constitution it represents it represents 
you know we the people of india you know enshrined in the constitution mention in the preamble now so this if you look at it is a very important institution now if you look at the parliament parliament can be defined also as parliament as an institution of first law making law making parliament is a basically highest institution of law making right one thing i would like to detail you if you look at the parliament it is detailed in the part 5 of the constitution and if you look at article 79 to article 112 deals with the parliament right now come to how to define parliament parliament is a law making body it is institution of law making now if you look at the parliament parliament is the highest law making institution in india law making body in india since independence you know since 1952 approximately 3500 laws are made by the parliament right since 1952 approximately 3500 laws are made by the parliament now secondly we can say that the parliament is in the institution of deliberation parliament is an institution of deliberation it is a highest deliberative body it discusses you know the local national regional as well as international issues right it is a it is an institution of deliberation as it discusses you know local regional national and international issue right no issues for example you know the current parliament had discussed what is the position of india on russia ukraine war right so if you look at the parliament it is an institution of deliberation now third if you look at parliament is an institution of representation it is an institution of representation now if you look at the rajya sabha the upper house represents states the rajya sabha represents state now if you look at up has 31 member goa has one member bihar has 16 members haryana has five members now lok sabha lok sabha represents will of the people will of the people now the parliament is an institution of financial management financial management now if, if you look at the entire budget session is devoted to decide about the budget right demand for grants you know for the entire year so if you look at it is a financial man you know apart from it if you look at parliament is an institution of accountability
parliament is an institution of accountability we know that what happens in the parliament the government is responsible collectively to the lower house right and if you look at article 75 which also says that the parliament the government sorry the council of ministers shall be collectively responsible to the lower house so it is an institution of accountability now how does it ensure accountability right there are three mechanism through which parliament ensures accountability right there are three four mechanism first is no confidence motion no confidence motion through which parliament ensures accountability basically no confidence motion is introduced in the lok sabha by the opposition right now secondly if you look at you know the parliamentary committee if you know there are several parliamentary committee which examines the bill which examines demand for grants which examines budget right which examines the report submitted by you know controller and auditor general of india cag so parliamentary committee also ensures accountability thirdly if you look at opposition opposition ask question from the government right it actually become critical it represent the interest of the people right opposition basically you know propose alternative policies and programs and through this opposition ensures accountability then there are parliamentary mechanisms parliamentary devices like question hour like zero hour right like calling attention motion parliament ensures accountability so this way we can proceed with uh, to the parliament the concept of parliament and we can understand polity in a very you know simplified manner thank you see you